We are on the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our gospel today is a wake-up call for us. Knowing the Lord and the gospel is not enough. It is necessary to live the life that Jesus lived and put his words into practice. Entrance into God's kingdom is not easy because we have to pass through a narrow door. May we have the humility to see that God's kingdom is a gift which we have to accept with joy and courage so that it may bear fruit in our lives. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. The people will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius is a book that compiles the instructions of St. Ignatius of Loyola to whoever is directing the spiritual retreat of a person or of a group. And in the preliminary notes of the, the, the book, Ignatius defines the term spiritual exercises as certain operations or certain activities of the mind and heart, such as the examination of conscience, meditation, contemplation, mental and vocal prayer. And Ignatius adds that just as taking a walk or journeying on foot or running around a track are bodily exercises, so we call spiritual exercises every way of freeing the soul from its disordered attachments to wealth, for example, or to fame or to power, and so put it in the way of knowing and embracing the will of God in our lives. In other words, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, just as we need physical exercises to maintain a healthy body, so do we need spiritual exercises to maintain a healthy spirit, a spirit that is free of disordered attachments to power or to possessions so that it could focus on God alone, God alone and in doing His will. And today's readings remind us of the importance of constant spiritual exercise. In today's gospel, for example, someone asks Jesus, Lord, will only a few people be saved? The question of who and how many will be saved has per perhaps occurred to most of us, if not all of us, at some point in our lives. 
this question perhaps captures the insecurity and anxiety that we have about getting to heaven and our own chances of being good enough and worthy of entering heaven. But Jesus does not give an exact answer to this question. Perhaps because the one asking the question asks the wrong question. Instead, Jesus says that the gate is wide open and everyone is welcome and everyone is, freely, is given free entry into the kingdom of God. Everyone. Lahat, lahat. But the problem is, the gate is narrow. In other words, rather than our trying to figure out how many will fit through that gate, that narrow gate, we should make sure that we ourselves will fit through that narrow gate. We have to make sure of that. And how do we do this? St. Ignatius says, through the daily discipline of spiritual exercises. Whenever we exercise, we always remind ourselves, no pain, no gain. Pain is necessary so that we may be stronger. And this is perhaps why Jesus advises no? the response to the question. Was his response was, strive, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many will attempt to enter but will not be strong enough. So you have to strive. And the Greek word for strive, agonizomai, from which we get also the word agony, is used to describe the, 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 the preparation of an athlete, the training of an athlete when before he enters into the arena or stadium. Just as an athlete must gradually build up strength through daily disciplined exercise, so spiritual fitness con requires consistent effort of constant training that we get through prayer, meditation perhaps, reflection, or an examination of our conscience. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we need to strive. We need to agonize. We need to exercise for, as Jesus said, many who attempt to enter the narrow gate will not be strong enough. Striving does not only mean suffering through difficulty. More importantly, it is about strengthening ourselves so we can run the spiritual race. Rather than focusing on the pain, we fix our sights on what is to be gained, which is the kingdom of God. Today's second reading from the letter to the Hebrews also focuses on the discipline necessary to build up spiritual strength. The, our reading, our second reading today mentions discipline five times. And the Greek word that is translated as discipline actually means instruction and training for responsible living. Instruction and training for responsible living. And how is this training for responsible living done? The author of the letters to the Hebrews makes an analogy between the training that a child receives from, the par from a parent and the guidance God provides us to deepen our spiritual life. The Greek word used here means not so much punishment for wrongdoing, because that is what we usually mean by discipline. Punishment for wrongdoing. But in this, in this letter to the Hebrews, it is used in the context as training for life that we receive, especially through suffering. That it is God, like a loving parent, teaching us good living, refining our rough edges, helping us to learn from the difficulties and challenges of life that we must face and guiding us in how to become stronger through all these difficulties and challenges. The letter to the Hebrews reminds us that life itself can, rid, can get rid of some of our rough edges. These are the trials that it calls 
the discipline of the Lord. Sabi dito, accept the discipline of the Lord. Magpadisiplina tayo sa Panginoon. For example, it is hard to be self-centered when there is someone in your home who needs constant attention. A young child or an aging parent. These people take us out of ourselves, take out the focus of our lives on ourselves, and we learn to focus on the needs of others. We learn to focus on other people. It is also hard to be arrogant when a person is unemployed or weighed down with so many deaths or hit by illnesses. These events in our life humble us. So, tanggapin natin because that is the loving discipline of the Lord. It is not punishment. It is something to help us become better. This is how life can put us in spiritual shape, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Whether God sends something into our life or allows it to happen, a person of faith knows that all these challenges bring the grace to build spiritual muscle that make us ready to enter through the narrow gate. And so the question is, can we fit through the narrow gate? Are we in spiritual shape? Or do we need to slim down? Masyado tayong malaki. Hindi tayo makalusot sa, sa, sa narrow gate. Do we have to slim down our bloated egos especially? That we are too, because we are too proud of our status in our communities. We are too proud of our, sta of our, of our status in our workplaces. We are too proud of our titles or the power that we have over others. Perhaps we need to slim down our bloated egos. Or another problem is, hindi tayo makalusot sa narrow gate dahil marami tayong daladala. We have a lot of baggages and our baggages prevent us from entering into the narrow gate. Perhaps we have the baggage, the, the baggage that weighs us down is the baggage of wealth and possession. We are too attached to what we have and we cannot let go and that is what prevents us from entering the narrow gate. Or we can even have the, so the psycho-emotional baggages like grudges, sama ng loob natin sa ibang tao, ang ating galit, hatred for others, our greed, our envy and jealousy of other people. These two can weigh us down. Ito yung mga baggages that prevent us from entering into the narrow gate. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we know the big difference in our life when we are in physical shape. We become more efficient, have more energy, and think more clearly, and we have more very positive disposition in life. The same thing happens when we get into spiritual shape. The energies of the soul that we call the virtues are released. Our good intentions are easier to carry out in our lives. Our prayer is deeper and easier and more meaningful. And God's will in our lives become clearer and it's easier for us to be obedient to the will of God. And so today, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we are invited to engage in spiritual exercises. We are invited to daily strengthen our spirits so that we can manage to enter into the narrow gate. Amen. And for your announcement, uh, announcement, homework pala. For your homework, Jesus himself says in the Gospel of Matthew, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it that is what the lord himself says and today is an invitation for us to engage in spiritual exercises 
because many of us are not able, are not strong and brave enough to enter the narrow gate. Why? Maybe because we, have, we are too big for that narrow gate because of our bloated egos. We overvalue ourselves and we forget the Lord in our lives because we think that we can survive through life by our, by our, own, our own devices, no? our talent or, for example, our own possessions. And that is another thing. We are ab unable to enter the narrow gate not only because we have very big egos, but also sometimes because we have baggages that we have to let go of para makalusot tayo sa narrow gate. And what are these baggages? Our attachment, disordered, no? Inordinate attachments ang sabi ni, ni St. Ignatius. Bakit disordered attachment? Mali ang order. Kasi ang order dapat, number one, ang Diyos. Pangalawa, pangatlo, yung iba. Pero inuuna natin ang mga iba sa Panginoon. And whatever takes, uh, takes precedence over Christ, we have, they are disordered attachments and we have to let go. And so the invitation for us is to engage in a spiritual exercise. And what is that spiritual exercise? Daily prayer perhaps, or at the end of the day, you look back at the day and identify three things that you can be thankful and grateful to the Lord. So we always remember the Lord. Or for example, you can, you can look for a particular sin or a particular disordered attachment that you want to let go of and see whether you were able to let go of it during the day. And this spiritual exercise, we do it for 21 days. Why 21 days? Because they say it takes 21 days to build a habit. So if, it want, if you want it to be part of your life, for 21 days, do a spiritual exercise that will strengthen your spirits so that you will be strong enough to enter through the narrow gate when the time comes. Let us now...